Welcome back. It's our last session and we're in chapter 22. Chapter 22's theme, the magnificent new heaven and new earth built for eternity. In our last timeline, we'll look at Jesus' resurrection, the 40 days, Jesus' ascension, the church age, Jesus' rapture, the seven-year tribulation period, the second coming of Christ, the thousand-year millennial reign, the lake of fire, the great white throne judgment, and the new heaven and the new earth. One of the things I'd like to take time now is to talk about the reason heaven will not be a boring place. I remember years ago, I heard a song and it was a rock song that said, heaven is a boring place. All you're going to do is sit around and, and play on harps and well, heaven's going to be a wonderful place. And uh, the first thing I, I make note of is there will be peace in heaven. You know, they have researched people who had near-death experiences. A study of 190 people who have had these experiences revealed them to be quite calm. 90% of the participants reported feeling, above all, a sense of peacefulness. You know, really, I don't think we can understand what true peace is, is really all about. Because no matter what you do, you're still going to have the flesh, you're going to have the world, you're going to have thoughts, you're going to, all those things suppress peace. But when you get to heaven, there won't be any of that. Therefore, there will be true peace. The second is there will be no more desire that keeps us from God. For example, the world. I really like football. I uh, like to follow Liberty University. Um, they're a team that I, I kind of work with and stuff like that. I was a chaplain for the men's basketball team uh, at Liberty. And, um, you know, sometimes I'll be right in the middle of the devotion. I'm going, boy, you know, I wonder what Liberty's doing. I, I wonder if, if, what kind of recruits they got in. And sometimes it's not a terrible thing, but it, the world will draw you away from the peace that passes all understanding. Not only that, but the flesh. We're constantly dealing with the flesh and the devil. Those are the things that will keep us from having true peace. The third thing, everything will be new. Seeing and experiencing new things is never boring. Uh, I was talking to some of the people in my Sunday school class the other day, and they had just got back from the ark. And I said, boy, was that a boring place or what? They said, are you kidding? Man, it was a great place. And they started telling me all about the museums and everything else. And I'm saying, you see, that's what I'm trying to tell you, is that when new things are there, you don't get bored. If you've ever gone to Israel and he shows you, the God shows you this and shows you that place and talks about that place. And you're going, wow, this, you can't wait to get to the next place. Well, everything is going to be new in heaven. Not only that, but we will be in the presence of God. I've only told this story maybe a couple times and I've, I've ministered for probably about 50 years. And, um, I can tell you this story that I'm going to tell you is, is really uh, kind of hard to tell you. But I remember when I first got saved, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I want your presence. God, fill me with your presence. Lord, I want to do great things for you. And I started crying out to God. As a matter of fact, I was all by myself. And I said, God, show your power in my life. And I kid you not, something overcame me in such a way that it almost felt like I was going to die. The body that we have now cannot hold the glory of God. I had to actually ask God, God, I can't take this, the physical body I have right here. I can't take it. That's the kind of power 
that will happen when we get in the presence of God. Things that will not be in heaven. I, I uh, started thinking about what, what is not going to be in heaven? Well, first of all, there won't be any hospitals there because there'll be no sickness. So if you're a doctor, I'm not saying doctors are not going to be there. I'm saying you won't be needed. Uh, nurses, you won't be needed because there won't be any hospitals there. There won't be any funeral homes there because there's no death there. There's no need for locks because there are no thieves there. There are no jails or prisons. We've been set free. There'll be no mental health wards. We have Jesus who is the wonderful counselor there. We won't need any money. We will walk on streets of pure gold. We won't have to worry what's in our bank account anymore. There'll be no homeless people or mortgages because he's already prepared a place for us. I was listening to somebody the other day and they were talking about bringing these immigrants into the United States and putting them in high-rise apartments in Chicago and stuff. And they said, here we got Americans sleeping on the streets and you're bringing in people and putting them in high-rise, beautiful apartments. Well, you won't have that when you get to heaven because he's gone to prepare a place just for you. There won't be any flashlights because they'll have 24-hour day, daylight and it comes from Jesus. You will not need any watches. We will live on God's clock. You won't need any sunscreen because the sun will no longer supply the light and the heat. Now, I've got to admit to you, I'm very light complected and I can burn in the bathroom with the heat lamp on. I mean, I can fall asleep next to a night light and wake up with a tan. I mean, I am so light. When I get out in playing golf or whatever, I've got to just saturate myself with the sunscreen and everything. When I was growing up, the sunscreen was the porch. Now you got to put all this sunblock and sunscreen on and everything else. Won't need that in heaven. Revelation 22. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. As a matter of fact, that's the reason why you can't take the mark of the beast and go to heaven, because everybody in heaven will have the mark of God on their forehead, not the mark of of the beast. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, 
and may enter in through the gates into the city. You know, again, like we talked in our last session, he's talking about all the blessings. And right in the middle of that, he puts a problem. He says, you have a choice. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come! And let him that heareth say, Come! And let him that is a thirst, Come! And whosoever will, let him take the water of life Freely. Again, the angel is talking and he's, he's talking about thirst. During the tribulation period, some people couldn't find water. They understood what it was not to find water. And he says there, right here, there's living water and you drink of it freely. See, I don't know if you've ever been really thirsty. Now, sometimes I will drink uh, water and it just, it's just to, to drink. But I'll tell you what, after I go cut the grass or I am really dehydrated, as soon as I put that thing to my lips and it starts going down, I can't help but just thanking the Lord for it. Now, I should thank the Lord all the time, but it's when I was really thirsty, I really, really am thankful to the Lord for that water. And that's what's happening here. He said, now you'll have living water. Freely take it. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Well, I can't tell you how pleased I am to be a part of your life if you've watched this whole video. I must admit that there were times that I wanted to quit, but I didn't. There might be times when you think you might want to quit. Don't give up. I've got a song that I want you to hear, and I'm going to close out with this song. Angela James did a song, and she basically says, don't give up now. You're almost there. God bless you. Sometimes you just gotta let go Sometimes you gotta take a risk Don't, Don't give up now The waves may be crashing down But he won't let you drown Don't, Don't give up now Sometimes the
Sometimes you gotta take a risk Don't